on the next episode of World in America. Soulful drum beats, seafood cooked to perfection, families rebuilding communities. We'll take a quick trip through the experiences of the Senegalese Americans. They may seem like brand new immigrants, but we'll see how these self-made people actually have profound historical roots in America. Coming up on the next World in America. Archaeological findings indicate that Senegal has been inhabited since prehistoric times, beautifully placed on the western tip of Africa. Senegal is one of the up-and-coming countries of the continent. With a current population of 12 million, Senegal is a stirring, soulful flatland. The northern border of the country is formed by the Senegal River and its capital, Dakar, lies on the Cap Vert Peninsula, which is the westernmost point of the African continent. Senegal has a wide variety of ethnic groups, and as in most Western African countries, several languages are widely spoken. While French is the official language, Wolof is the lingua franca. Since the Wolof are the single largest ethnic group, comprising nearly half of the Senegalese population. Dom Babu is a veteran Senegalese American who has been here for more than 20 years. Working as a correspondent for a Senegalese newspaper, he is also the host of a radio show covering Senegalese and other African issues once a week. My name is Dam Babu and I've been living in the U.S. since the early 80s. So I'm part of the almost the Harlem fabric now and uh, I do radio for the last 17 years and I do also newspaper. I do a lot of political commentaries for newspapers back home and I do also commentaries and news for a radio network, the first private radio network in Senegal, Sud FM. Without a doubt, Dom Babu is the go-to person to learn about Senegalese immigration to the States. From 1970s, early 70s, you have this very bad drought that chased almost a lot of people from the countryside to the cities. And they started immigrating in Europe and in Central Africa. Immigrants from Senegal uh, who are in America, they are a little bit different from, uh, from the Senegalese in Europe. Because the first ones who come here, who settle here, they are from the countryside. They were already back home, what you call the self-mad men. They are from uh, what they call the informal sector of, of the economy, like selling, retail, not really or controlled by government. That's why when they come here also, they live together as they used to do in Dakar. They live with the same cultural behavior, with the, with the, with the same thinking, with the same, uh, with the same uh, way of dealing among themselves. Since the early 80s, the drought-ridden Senegalese found their new homes in Harlem, New York. More specifically, the 116th Street is now also known as Little Senegal. Bustling with many businesses that cater to the specific needs of the Senegalese, the area is vibrant and filled with life. Senegalese immigrants brought to their new home many cultural riches. To see all of these riches, one needs to visit a family on 116th Street. 
Isun Tundal Jacate and her family are one of these Senegalese families who have made Harlem their new home. My name is Aisa Tundal. I've been in the United States since 1986, living with my children and my husband in Harlem for 20 something years. My name is Tala Jacate. I come from the uh, United States 1983. My name is Daba Daikate, and I was born here. Currently, I'm in um, BMCC University. I'm studying political science. Like many other immigrants, the Jacate family feels welcomed and enjoys the benefits the United States has to offer. You can say these people is the people who welcome you if they know you. Without knowing you, they base on your sight. But as soon as they know you, very welcome you and they was part of your life. They like about being in United States because uh, United States people, they, they are good, they, they welcome you. You can go everywhere in Europe, but you got a difficulty, especially you go to Paris, you get up from the train station, they ask you your document. When the people come in the U.S., you got your passport, you put them in a house, and nobody stop you if you have your ID. You can walk away, look like you're a citizen of the United States. Nobody can tell who is a citizen, who is not a citizen. There's so many, like, cultures. So many things to learn about different people. There's always something new to learn. There's so many cultures here. There's Chinatown and there's Little Italy and there's Greece. Like a lot of different cultures that you can just learn about besides yours and you can compare those cultures to yours. For the Jacquetes and other Senegalese, adaptation has not been always a smooth sail. In the process of becoming part and parcel of the American fabric, they even took chances with their own lives, while mostly working as peddlers and cab drivers. We've been working so hard and living in this community. We lost our life. We sacrificed a lot. I can tell you I was writing a series of articles from the newspaper about the cab drivers killed, the Senegalese cab driver. I started counting and writing uh, when I get to like 38 in about 10 years killed in their taxis, I, I had to stop. I just couldn't uh, make, uh, take it anymore. And risking one's life hasn't been the only challenge Senegalese immigrants had to go through. Obviously, when we come here, almost none of us speak English. Speaks English. That's the, that's the first challenge that they have. Sometimes you walk in the street, you're talking to somebody, they say, go back to Africa. My older daughter was living in Harlem and be discriminated at the school because you're African, you're from the jungle, you're from the booth, you're not, you stink. Although different kind of language, you can hurt from people because the reason, you cannot blame the people, but the media will show them and tell them what the African is about. They don't tell you exactly what the reality. We have a big house in Africa. Living in a Harlem, in an apartment, you see how small it is. You apply for housing, it's not easy for you. So you are from a country where everybody's black. The goods are black, the bads are black. The thief are black, the rich are black, the poor are black. When we come here, we really need to take a little bit of time before we feel what it means to have a black skin or a different skin. We have to take time to be able to learn. Okay, it means, um, it's a certain person that's saying it, it's saying stop using, like it's a certain cream that bleaches your face so it makes you lighter. So it says stop bleaching the cream. Although the Jacate family has put up with many struggles to make it happen here in the United States, they have not wagered their strong cultural values in the bargain. If you say hi, you have to always stop and say like, hi, make sure you say hi to everybody. But if you just say hi and just walk past and no one hears you, 
people will find that very rude and impolite. Anybody you see in the street, if you're a younger child, you pass by those adults, shake a hand to all of them. They know your mother, they know your father. They can give you a witness tomorrow. Child of Asundo pass by always in the street and say hello. She's a very polite child. Another example of these cultural essentials is Soon Tun Dao keeps up on a daily basis is making a sweet, strong cup of cafe tuba. A national favorite, this coffee comes all the way from the city of Tuba, also known as the spiritual capital of Senegal. If we don't do the culture, show them where we come from and how we dress back home, they're going to lose the culture. Trying to live their culture to the fullest in their new home, the Jacate family pride themselves with their eye-catching traditional clothing. Since it's very, very hot over there, we like to wear very like floral wear, thin, not too thick wear. It's always hot, especially during the summertime. It's always bright colors. We like to wear bright colors and it's very distinct. It's like this orange and purple. It's not always one like distinct color. It's always like different type of patterns in our clothing. Like our styles is like different from everyone. We always have to look nice all the time. Um, the way the pattern, we have a very unique pattern because it's very different from like other countries. We dress, dress up just like a prince and a queen, talk the language, do whatever the coach is about at that day. The crown piece in this princely traditional attire is a gorgeous head wrap. Anytime they see our head wrap, the hair wrap we wrap in our hair, the women, they know it's from Senegal. Definitely they don't know because other countries had the hair wrap different than ours. They also have this fabric, it's, it's like a type of paper. See that? I met them. She makes the um, head wraps. She gets the fabric from Senegal, so she makes it. What she does is she finds a different type of hair design that she could be able to, so it could look right with my outfit. As the Senegalese dresses and hats are designed colorfully, Senegalese cuisine is also candy to the eyes and wholesome to the stomach. One of the best spots to get a great bite is located on the corner of Grand Ave and Clifton Place in Brooklyn, New York. It's the Grand Dakar Restaurant, owned and operated by the famous Chef Pierre Cham, who even has a well-received book on Senegalese cuisine. Well, my name is Pierre Cham. I'm from Senegal, from born and raised in Dakar, from uh, parents from the south of Senegal. Been here for 20 years now. Got stuck in New York for a couple of weeks. That was supposed to be the length of my trip. And 20 years later, I'm still here. <laughs> Just uh, it's a long story. Dakar means Dakar, really. The real pronunciation means tamarind. And tamarind is a fruit, a fruit that's sweet and sour that you would find pretty much all over Senegal. And uh, apparently, the little uh, story has that the colonial, the French arrived, and they wanted to know the name of that, that fruit. It's like it's everywhere. You guys cook with it. You do anything. You do, you know, you, you do snack on it. And uh, they said Dakar, but the French couldn't say Dakar, and Dakar became Dakar, and Dakar became the name of our capital city. So it's like even food is included in the name of our cities. So it's very, very much a, a food country, a food culture. If you visit a Senegalese home, it is highly probable that the first dish you'll be offered is chebujen. The first thing they to put on the table is the chebujen. They can cook any food they like, but the chebujen is the more hospitality food and they like in Senegal. 
Here is a national dish called chebujan, and the fish is stuffed with parsley, onions, garlic, and most importantly, scotch bonnet, this kind of spice that you'd find in most of our dishes because we need to bring it a little, kick it up a notch, like they would say. They make what we call a rough, and you stuff the fish with it before cooking it. It cooks in the red rice. This red rice is a broken rice, broken jasmine rice, that got this red complexion from being cooked in that same broth as the fish was cooked in. So it has those interesting levels of like, it's like a fish broth, but it has a tomato and vegetable broth mixed to it. So that makes it a very, very interesting. Here you have what we call the plantain papillot, and papillot is like a nod to the French way of calling anything that's cooked in its own envelope. Plantain is an integral part of the Senegalese cuisine. Here, Chef Pierre gives it a tasty edge. We serve it with a, a coleslaw, a, a Dakar, Grand Dakar coleslaw with carrot and cabbage and tamarind dressing on it. Inspired by a traditional Ivory Coast recipe, tilapia prasson brasé is a must-eat dish at the Grand Dakar. That's a grilled fish that comes with a cassava couscous, or some other people call it yuca couscous, and uh, the top is a tomato relish that's a little spicy that has a hint of lime in it, and that comes with uh, the grilled fish. Food is never only about filling one's stomach. It gives us vital clues regarding communal life and family structure of the Senegalese people. Everyone eats together. Everyone eats together. You have to wait for almost everyone to be, to be here. And we gather around the bowl, because that's the way we eat around the bowl. It's, there's a whole symbolic around that circle, that unity. It's the whole, you know, the universe is like in, in the, 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 the family at that moment. Whenever Senegal is the case, the first thing that comes to mind is drumming. It is, as it were, the heart and soul of the Senegalese. My name is Cher Tairo Mai. I'm from Senegal, West Africa, born in the Guyo family. I've been here in 14 years in the United States and with my brothers and cousin. All my family, they are trauma dancers and singers. The name of the group, we name it after our great-grandfather and the Sing Sing Rhythms. That's why you hear Cher Tairumai and Sing Sing Rhythms. Shekhtaro Mumbai, the leader of the band, goes to each drummer and tells where that person hails from and which tribe he belongs to. In this moment, drum beats become the conduits through which the spirit of the ancestor is remembered. Just as the new Senegalese migration to the States completes a circle that began by force and ended by choice, the Sing Sing Rhythm also symbolizes this historical journey with their beats.
The Sing Sing Rhythm specializes in Sabar music. Sabar music is about celebration and incorporates energetic dance. Its flashy moves directly reminds us of its impact on its cousin, break dancing and the hip hop culture. As the Sabar celebration goes into the wee hours of the night, the Senegalese Americans appreciate the opportunities of their new home, contemplate about the ongoing challenges of the future, and recharge themselves with the lovely sounds of drum beats that remind them of their beautiful Senegal. Western African countries, several languages are widely spoken. While French is the official language, Wolof is the lingua franca, since the Wolof are the single largest ethnic group, comprising nearly half of the Senegalese population. Dom Babu is a veteran Senegalese American who has been here for more than 20 years. Working as a correspondent for a Senegalese newspaper, he is also the host of a radio show covering Senegalese and other African issues once a week. You have this very bad drought that chairs almost a lot of people from the countryside to the cities and they started immigrating uh, in, in Europe and in Central Africa. Immigrants from Senegal uh, who are in America, they are a little bit different from, uh, from the Senegalese in Europe because the first ones who come here, who settle here, they are from the countryside. They were already back home, what you call the self-made man. They are from uh, what they call the informal sector of, of the economy, like selling, retail, not really or controlled by government. That's why when they come here also, they live together as they used to do in Dakar, they live with the same. Archaeological findings indicate that Senegal has been inhabited since prehistoric times. Beautifully placed on the western tip of Africa, Senegal is one of the up-and-coming countries of the continent. With a current population of 12 million, Senegal is a stirring, soulful flatland. The northern border of the country is formed by the Senegal River and its capital, Dakar, lies on the Cap Vert Peninsula, which is the westernmost point of the African continent. Senegal has a wide variety of ethnic groups and as in most... On the next episode of World in America, soulful drum beats, seafood cooked to perfection, families rebuilding communities, We'll take a quick trip through the experiences of the Senegalese Americans. They may seem like brand new immigrants, but we'll see how these self-made people actually have profound historical roots in America. Coming up on the next World in America.
My name is Dam Babu and I've been living in the US since the early 80s. So I am part of the almost the Harlem fabric now. And uh, I do radio for the last 17 years and I do also newspaper. I do a lot of political commentaries for newspapers, newspapers back home. And I do also commentaries and news for a radio network, the first private radio network in Senegal, Sud FM. Without a doubt, Dom Babu is the go-to person to learn about Senegalese immigration to the States. From 1970s, early 70s, 